In ancient Greece, there was a philosopher who was always laughing. Democritus was nicknamed the laughing philosopher because he was always laughing. On the other hand, Heraclitus is said to be the weeping philosopher. These two are almost always introduced together, one laughing and the other weeping. Democritus was born in Abdera in ancient Greece around the 5th century BC. Records show that Democritus inherited a significant fortune. It is said that he received about a hundred talents. At that time, a worship like this was worth one talent. So he received a hundred worships and inheritance. Democritus spent all his money traveling around in his youth. He traveled around Persia, Egypt, India, and Ethiopia. Even by modern standards, he was pretty yellow. Democritus said everything is composed of atoms. Does he mean the atoms that Dalton proposed in the 19th century? Yes, it was quite similar to Dalton's atom. 2,500 years before Dalton proposed his atomic model, Democritus came up with the theory of atoms. Democritus' theory of atoms. That's the topic for today. Parmenides proposed two propositions. What is is and what is not is not. Of course, it seems obvious. What is is and what is not is not. Parmenides used these obvious propositions to prove that motion is impossible in this world. Let's see how he proves this. His proof is so original, you better pay attention. There's a cup of coffee on the left. If the coffee is to move from the left to the right, there has to be a void in the right. The coffee needs empty space to go into. But a void is nothing. And nothing cannot be. As we said, what is not is not. Therefore, the coffee cannot move right. In other words, motion is impossible. Ancient Greek philosophers couldn't accept the conclusion of Parmenides that nothing changes. One of them was Democritus. Democritus changed the propositions of Parmenides like this. What is are atoms, and voids can be. So atoms move around the void and gather and separate. What is an atom? The a ah in atom means not, and tom means to cut. So atom means something that can no longer be divided. If you continue to divide something, you'll find something that you can't divide anymore. That's what an atom is. Atoms are not created or destroyed. The nature of all atoms are the same, but the shape and size of the atoms are all different. Depending on how you combine the atoms, different substances are created. It's like how depending on how carbon atoms are placed, they become diamond or graphite. The materials that are produced depend on how atoms are arranged. It's no different from the atomic model that Dalton presented in the 19th century. Dalton's model was later developed by Thomson, Rutherford, and Bohr. So, in a way, the atomic theory of Democritus is the foundation of modern physics. There is an amazing idea underlying the theory of Democritus. There is a cup of coffee here. But why does the coffee exist? Of course, it's because I put it there. It's here because I put it here to drink. It's quite windy outside. Why is the wind blowing? It's because of the difference in air pressure. Air moves from high pressure to low pressure. Now, I gave two answers to why something exists. One is teleological, and the other is causal. First, I explain why this coffee exists with the purpose of its existence. This is the teleological explanation. However, the reason the wind exists was explained with the cause of the wind, the high air pressure. This is a causal explanation. In other words, if you ask why something exists, you can answer what its purpose is or what its cause is. Ancient Greek philosophers and medieval philosophers who inherited the tradition of ancient Greece mainly gave a teleological explanation to the question of why. An acorn's purpose is to become an oak tree. It rains so the crops can grow. And I exist to serve God. It wasn't until modern times that we began to answer the question of causality, not that of purpose. An oak tree exists because I planted an acorn. It rains because the water vapors condensed and grew heavy. And I exist because my parents gave birth to me. Democritus was the first to answer a question of causality. Democritus thought that the reason different substances exist is that atoms move around and combine to form them. The motion of atoms have no mysterious power no divine intention or purpose. It's just that they move according to mechanical rules. Democritus was the first to explain the mechanical-causal relationship. 
If matter is made of atoms, what about the human soul? Democritus thought that the human soul was also made up of atoms. So when a person dies, the human soul also disappears, just as the body does. In other words, the human soul is also like matter. Many ancient Greek philosophers thought that the soul remains even if the body dies. That's why when sentenced to death, Socrates pointed his finger at the sky, saying, if I die, my soul will go there. This was inherited by Plato. Plato pointed his finger at the sky, saying that the world of ideas was up there. Christians also believe that when they die, they will go to heaven. Nietzsche criticized their ideas for coming up with a world beyond our own. But Democritus already said, more than 2,000 years before Nietzsche, that when we die, our souls just disappear. If there's no soul, there's no need for an afterlife. So there's no such thing as the other world, idea, or heaven. So we can call him the first materialist. Let's wrap up. First, Democritus said everything is composed of atoms. Atoms are what cannot be divided further. In that sense, Democritus set the foundation of modern physics. Second, Democritus gave a causal explanation for natural phenomena, not a teleological one. Third, he said that when we die, the soul disappears as well. In that sense, he was a materialist.